Every door's got a different way of doing things, and so what we're going to look at here is ways you can personalise Cubase in a few different ways to make it your own. Here we're going to explore creating a project template in Cubase. This is useful for when you want to keep some of the settings or save the settings, track ideas and maybe effect sends and things like that, ready to use in a new project where you play different musical elements and you want something to start with. So here we have the track that I used before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all the content, which just leaves me with the different individual elements, which I can play from the keyboard. Claps, snares, hats, and so on. And then I go to the menu, File, Save as Template, and I can give it a name. Template idea one, and say OK. Now if I close the project, so now I can use the template and start with that to create a new track afresh. So File, New Project, you've seen the More tab here, it says Template Idea, which I saved before, click on that, Create, it'll ask me for a location, I'll just choose it here and just say Steinberg Vid, and what it does is it'll actually load up the project with the same settings as before, but obviously without any of the actual content which I had in there, which means I can now start by playing a kick drum, use the claps and snares, and use the various elements as before. If I look at the mixer, you'll see that all those settings are saved as well. And this is great when you're working on tracks with a similar kind of vibe, or you need a setup to get you going straight away and really quickly if you've got an idea you're itching to try out. So now we're going to look at key commands, shortcut keys. These are quick ways of accessing certain functions by using keys on the keyboard rather than dipping into menus and things like that. You'll notice if you go into the menus, you'll see, for example, that we have these key commands shown down the side, which you can, of course, learn. There are quite a few, but also what you can do if you go into the key commands window here, if I just open this up, make it a little bit larger, and you'll see that all the key commands are divided into all the different sections relevant to different areas of Cubase, different menus, different windows, and so on. And we can access them by opening up the little plus sign here. If we go, for example, to the Devices menu, you can see that F3 is set to open the main mixer window. So when I press F3 on the keyboard, it opens the mixer. I can reassign this if I want to by going into this window here and actually add, actually add a couple of key commands to do the same thing. So if I want the key number three to open up the mix window, I click on this, press three, and it appears here, and it tells me that it's already assigned to the split tool, but actually I can just go ahead and press assign, and here I'm going to reassign it, and so now if I press F3 or three, it'll bring up the mix window. We can look at all the key commands in one go, we can search on key commands as well if we want to find them, because there are lots and lots actually buried in here. We can also store presets as well. So a whole series of presets. In fact, if you're a Pro Tools or a Logic user, you can actually set it up so it actually mimics some of the key commands that you're used to in the software that you've been using before. So we can look at a few examples here. If I highlight this region, press Control D, You'll notice what it does, it just duplicates the region, creates another copy afterwards. You can press Control D again. If I press that again, it makes another copy. Control Z, undo. We can also use Control C, which copies the region, and then I can set where I want it to go and press Control V, and it'll actually paste that in. So you notice how it pastes it in at the project position here, based on where I've got it located in the transport bar. Very important one, probably the most important one, is to make sure you save the project as often as you possibly can, and this should become second nature. That's Control-S, which will automatically save the project. So Control-S, you'll notice here, you can see that from the main window. It says Control-S, save. Do that as often as you can, and then you make sure you're not going to lose anything in your project. Right, so if you want to get fancy and actually change the look of Cubase, there are certain features in here that allow you to do that. First stop here is in the Preferences, and this is a Master Preferences menu, and you can go and customise a whole load of particular elements in Cubase. And there's an Appearance section here where you can actually select different colours to go with different types of tracks, 
different editing uh, window options so you can actually change the way the cycle colour looks, the grid colour looks, project colours and things like this and track type default so you can actually set a default colour for the different types of track. Also in here you can actually customise the appearance of the meters as well so if you want to change the way in which the channel meters and the master meters look in the mixer window you can do that as well. Another area in Cubase which is um, right for customization is in terms of the toolbars. If you right click on the toolbar you can select what appears there. You can also choose the setup menu and you can actually add or take away those different elements. You can save them as presets. So you can have a whole series of presets here dedicated to different tasks. So you might want different things in the menu and in the toolbar uh, when you're mastering as opposed to when you're actually editing a track and so on. This extends to aspects of the inspector here as well and also when you go into different editors you'll find that you can actually edit the toolbar there and again for the audio menu as well and for the MIDI editor and so on, the key editor and then also you'll find in the track list there are options for actually editing the track list controls track control settings and you can edit the appearance of the track list for all the different track types and once again there are presets that you can save for each individual instance. So it means you can customise the way in which Cubase appears, you can strip it right down so it looks very, very simple for when you're doing certain basic tasks, or you can have much more elaborate setups when you really need access to all kinds of different buttons and functions and things like that at all times.